Blender for Noobs. Hello, this is Dan Nobles and welcome to Blender for Noobs. In this tutorial, we're going to look at how to create really good wireframes and cycles. Uh, this tutorial is for intermediate noobs, not really for beginning noobs, and not really for advanced noobs, because they probably already know how to do it, but at least an intermediate user in Blender. So let's get started. What you need to do first is you need to download the Python script that will allow you to create these uh, wireframes and cycles. And I'll put the link to that download in the description so you can find it. The next thing you need to do is bring up the model that you want a wireframe of and make sure that you save it as a different name that you don't mind trashing because you don't want to trash your original model, of course. This particular model is a, uh, I had this idea of this big gun that I wanted to create that I'm trying to create the cyborg and I want him to be holding this gun. So that's what this is, just in case anybody's wondering. So once you bring up your model, you want to go to the outliner. So bring that up. And what you need to do is you need to have your model all one piece instead of different, different parts. Okay, so of course in order to do that, you need to select all the different pieces of the model. So I'm just going to do that really quick here. Okay, I think those are all the pieces. Once you have all the pieces selected, you want to do a control J to join the parts and make them, if you go into tab or uh, yeah, tab into edit mode, then you'll see in select, you'll see that you've joined all the pieces and I actually pulled my light emission, but that's okay. Um, so there that is. Keep in mind when you do that and you join them all to the last piece that you selected, it's going to take over the properties properties of what that last piece was. So if you had something with a modifier on it there, mirrored or subdivision service, whatever, just keep in mind that the entire model will take over that those properties. Okay, so now you got your model all one piece. Good. The next thing that you need to do is you need to make sure that your script is going to work. And in order to do that, the downloaded script that you have Find your um, Blender path, where it's located. Mine happens to be under the program files and these directories here. And you want to find your add-ons, and you just want to place it, paste it in here. And it happens to be called this, the wire underscore mat underscore GUI. That's the Python script there. Okay, so once you have it in the directory, then you can go to File, and go to User Preferences, and go to your add-ons, and I think it's under 3D view, but if you just type wire, then it'll bring it right up, and you'll see it here. It's called uh, Setup Wire Materials, and just click it so that it's enabled. Okay, and I'm just going to close that. So then once you go into T for Tools, you'll see this here running, and that's because you have that script running, or turned on. Okay, so by default, it uses this color as the material color overall, and it uses this color as the wires. Uh, by default, this is kind of a reddish color, which I don't like, uh, just my preference. So what I do is I go into HSV, and I just back off on the saturation to bring it up into the center of that so it's just really just black, a black color. Okay, so once you have that, make sure that your model selected and just click, you want to apply it to selected meshes, and you want to create a wire object, so you want to select that. Okay, and I'm not going to go over the different parts of this script because I'm the only part I'm really familiar with is the um, wireframe, and that's what I'm creating in this tutorial. Okay, so once you have those selected, you just want to apply materials. And it crunches away for a little bit, depending on the size of your model. And I'm going to hit T to get that out of the way. And you can see that's what it is. I'm not even in a uh, wireframe mode. If I Z in, you'll see that's wireframe mode. It shows that as a material. So once that's done, then all you really have to do is select your camera. And I'm going to select my perspective camera here. Come over here and control zero to make that active. 
and uh, hit F12 to do a render. Okay, so there you have it. A nice, good, clear wireframe. Looks really nice. Um, and through the magic of video editing, luckily you've seen it in seconds rather than the 11 minutes my poor computer took to actually render this. I need a new graphics card. Anyway, um, a couple of things about this render that you may or may not notice. One is all the bullets are missing. And I did that on purpose just to show you that if you don't apply your modifiers before you join your objects, then of course they're not going to show up when you join it to that last object. So you want to make sure you apply those correctly and then join them together. The other thing that you may be able to see here is there's some lines going off this way. Well, what is that? Well, let's take a look. If we go back to the actual image here, can we see them? Yes, we can. Can we select them? Yes, actually we can. Now this is an artifact of the script that I've seen. This, this part is actually my laser sight, so that's okay. But these are vertices that have just shot out of nowhere or shot way off into oblivion. And um, I don't know what causes that. There's something in the script that's doing it. And the more complex your model is, the more you'll run into these. Uh, what I've done lately or, or the best way I've found to take care of these is to go into the model, go into your edit mode, go and make sure you're in your vertex mode, go find the ones that are stray and just delete them. It doesn't hurt your wireframe usually unless it's in a place that's just um, really messing it up, but you can clean that up. That is the only thing that I've found wrong with the script. Um, Again, I don't know what causes that, but it just seems to be a bug with the script. And, and the more complex your model is, the more it seems to screw up. So that's kind of something that's going on there. So anyway, uh, that's how you get a really good wireframe render in Cycles. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please subscribe and comment in the video if you have know of a better way, or if you know anything about these artifacts, or have any comments at all. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and catch you on the next tutorial.